Hello, my name is Kevin Pires. I am a Senior Applications Engineer with Expo. And today, I'll be going over the DWDM Channel Checker Max 5205. Before we get into the DWDM Channel Checker, it's important to understand a little bit of the high-level overview of what DWDM is. So we'll do a quick review here. And so essentially, DWDM, when we're talking about it, is wave division multiplexing. So it's the muxing and demuxing of light is essentially what it is. And if you look at, say, a prism, a prism essentially demuxes light. So you have the white light coming in, and within that spectrum, within that light, we have multiple wavelengths in there. And so this is what happens when water vapors interact with sunlight. You kind of get that, you know, you get a rainbow. So there's those different colors coming out. So these colors, red, orange, yellow, green, they're all visible to us, but they're actually also wavelengths. So red is 640 to 680 nanometers are in that range. Blue is somewhere in the 480 nanometer range. So these are wavelengths that, 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 that we look at, you know, within the system. And so if you look at, say, um, the wavelengths that we're looking at, the wavelengths that we're looking at are, you know, really up here in, you know, the higher, spe you know, the, the higher spectrum. And so, you know, we're looking at up in the 15, 50 nanometer range, right? So they're also reflected as well, but they're not visible to us, but it's still DWDM, right? And so WDM wavelength division multiplexing is when we mux and demux light is essentially what it is. And so um, as, as we, you know, look at the different classifications of WDM, the three different classifications of WDM that, that we concern ourselves with the most is just your standard WDM, where you're muxing, say, two channels, 1310 and 1550. So they're out of band from each other, so they don't interfere with each other. And so that's just standard, you know, simple WDM muxing. If you want to get a little bit more spectrally efficient, you can go to something like CWDM, which is coarse wavelength division multiplexing. It's so up to 18 channels. So it's a very cost-effective way to deliver wavelengths. And there's a 20 nanometer spacing between 1271 and 1611. So every 20 nanometers, we have a wavelength in there. So it's really a great way to really take more advantage of your infrastructure and provide more spectral efficiency. Now, for ultimate spectral efficiency, we step up to DWDM, or Dense Wavelength Division Multiplexing. So you're getting a lot tighter channel spacing, 0 0.8 nanometers or less, you know, 50 gigahertz, 100 gigahertz spacing. This is where we start getting in into the C and L band. So up in your 1528 area to 1625 region. I mean, so we're, we're way up there in the spectrum. And so that's basically where we're going to focus most of our time here today, you know, talking about the MAX 5205, which is a channel checker for the DWDM range. And so when you look at a MUX, so we looked at the prism earlier. A MUX essentially takes multiple wavelengths and will MUX them onto a single fiber. And so in this, in this uh, example here, we have a four-channel system. It could be four channels of 10 gig. It could be one gig, 100 gig, you know, so a lot of mixed types of signals, but they'll get MUXed together into a single fiber and then sent down the path. And so that's kind of from a very high level what it is. And this is all running across a single fiber. What does the channel checker measure? So the DWDM test parameters that we are most concerned about when using a channel checker, one is going to be channel frequency or wavelength. So kind of central wavelength. And so when we're looking at, say, a 100 gigahertz ITU grid, in this example here, we identify this one as 1521.02 nanometers, right? And so that's where the central channel is. So that's the first thing we're looking for is we're identifying what wavelength is present. And then you know, comparing it to what's next to it. So this is our spacing here, 100 gigahertz spacing. So you can see kind of the separation here in the uh, wavelength spacing. And then, of course, we look at optical power. So this is the channel power portion of it, right? Uh, how the power is being shared, what the different levels are for the different uh, channels will also be populated. So the key critical parameters we're looking at is what is my wavelength? What is my central wavelength? And what is the power level? The optical power level of that particular channel and all the adjacent channels uh, that are visible to it, right? And so that's from a very high level what we're doing with the channel checker, where a standard power meter cannot do that, right? A standard power meter reads the entire, you know, a large, a much larger portion of the spectrum. And when you set it for, say, 1550, it's not measuring or, 
you know, discreetly measuring 1550, it's just doing an offset. So it's making an assumption that the signal that you're measuring is by itself and it's only 1550, right? Where a channel checker we use to check multiple channels going across a system uh, that have been muxed and demuxed. And so, you know, there's a lot of different types of architectures out there. I'm going to focus on one. Uh, so the remote fire architecture that we see quite a bit in the MSO or the, cable, the original cable TV market, um, we're seeing this heavily deployed. Certainly, we're also seeing a lot of WDM being deployed in um, wireless deployments like 5G uh, turnups and installations where every different radio has a different frequency or a different wavelength. We're seeing it in a lot of enterprise deployments as well. Traditionally, we saw DWDM on the line side feeding your backbone, but now it's pretty much everywhere, all the way to the end subscriber. In this example, we'll talk about how it applies with remote FI. And so when we're looking at remote FI, essentially, you know, we're going to have a head end somewhere that's going to bring in your video systems and, you know, your data uh, network. And essentially what's going to happen is those different uh, systems that come in will get muxed onto a single fiber. It could be multiple 100 gigs. It could be multiple 10 gigs, you know, obviously we're getting into higher, higher bit rates and multiple channels. So those will get muxed down the fiber and then sent down and then at some point demuxed. So, you know, it could be a very complex network where you have demuxes, uh, cascaded demuxes where, you, you know, you could, some channels drop and some channels just go straight through. And so this is from a very high level what we're looking at. And so we're seeing, you know, individual wavelengths feeding, say, a particular remote FI device or some sort of a fiber node in general, right? So we're seeing a lot of that uh, happening. And if you look at, say, uh, a channel list, so this is a 100 gig channel plan. Um, and so just your standard ITU wavelength grid system here. Uh, in this particular one, we'll look at, say, 100 gigahertz spacing. So 100 gigahertz spacing, if you look at the, you know, the the uh, uh, the gigahertz, you can see the the channel spacing, right? So we're about a, we're at 100 gigahertz channel spacing, which is about 0 0.8 nanometers uh, separation between them, right? Um, and so if, if you were to think about how complex it can get, so we have channels that go upstream, we have channels that go downstream. So in this example, uh, the upstream channels are between channel 47 and channel 56 in the ITU grid, where the downstream channels are between 33 and 42. And so these are the different channel plans. And of course, you might have, say, something like a guard band or guard channels in between. And so this is some of the complexities that we're looking at. So we have to make sure that our transmit and receive wavelengths are going to the right place and dropping and demuxing where they're supposed to be. And so that's where the channel checker really starts to come into place. And so if you look at, say, an example remote fire distribution in, in a little bit more of a detail, you could see how we have downstream signals. So channel 33 going downstream, channel 47 coming upstream. And all, for all these different remote fire devices, they're all going to have their own transmit uh, or downstream and upstream signal. So this is one way that, that it's done here today. You know, so this kind of gives you an idea of, of some of the complexities there. You know, so when we overlay that to our channel plan, you can kind of see how we're starting to run into uh, um, some confusion here. So it's really important to make sure that these wavelengths are where they're supposed to be. And so that's where the channel checker comes into play. So you, you would go to this location. Uh, you would plug in, you would do a scan, and it would identify the channels that it sees uh, going through that, you know, going to that device. Um, and so that's when we get into the MAX 5205. So the MAX 5205 is our DWDM channel checker. Um, and so I'm going to run through a little bit of what it looks like, and then I'll kind of show live demo of how to pull up a trace and, and how to analyze it. And so essentially, uh, the MAX platform... So that's the platform this is on. So it's a, it's a compact, ruggedized platform for the field. Um, and the module that's attached to it is the 5205. So again, this is our DWDM uh, channel checker. So it'll uh, do channels 12 to 62. Uh, you can either look at something in a bar graph or in a table. And, and, and we'll get into that when I show that uh, later on. Uh, just kind of a quick view of what it looks like and the sizes and the different interfaces. Um, so it is a touch screen. We have some soft keys on there for uh, some from easy navigation. And of course, we have all your standard Ethernet, USB uh, options on there as well, BFL, um, you know, a lot of different types of uh, uh, interfaces on the top of the, uh, the actual unit itself. And if we look at the interface, this is what the interface looks like. And so I'm going to jump straight over to the VNC. So I'm VNC'd into a 5205 now. So this is my Max 5205. 
Um, and so you'll see the interface here. And then of course, you know, up here in the top, uh, this is where we uh, have the uh, optical channel checker. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and launch the optical channel checker and then that'll start it up. And here we are in the main uh, uh, user interface screen here. So I don't have any traces loaded up here. And so just a quick, you know, kind of a navigation around the screen here. So over here to the right, uh, we have uh, different options here. Um, and so what we have here is obviously if we're gonna do a quick scan, we have the scan option, right? So we can scan uh, and, and this will just do a quick kind of average shot, tell you the available channels and their power levels, right? So that's what we're looking at here when we're looking at, at, at the actual scan itself. And if you wanna do a live trace, then next to it is the live trace um, there next to it. And then over here is where we kind of manage the files themselves. So if I wanna open up an existing file to kind of analyze some testing that I did, maybe compare a previous trace to an existing trace that I just did, that's what I can do there. Save to save the existing results and then report to generate a PDF. I'll come back to this after I do a, uh, an actual trace. Further down the menu screen, we have the, you know, the, um, the, the, report, the report info here. And so essentially report info is this is where you kind of populate, you know, how to identify this particular test. So put a port ID, location, you know, whatever makes sense for you here, you populate this. So when you, when you save the report or save the, t the trace, it'll have this information in there for you to kind of review. So then we have user preference here, um, just below it. And then for user preference, I can get in here and I can set display settings, analysis parameters, those types of things. So I can decide what kind of spectral unit I would like. Do I wanna see my results in wavelength or do I wanna see them in frequency? So in this particular situation, I'm gonna put it as wavelength. Uh, what kind of report do I want? PDF or XML, depending on how you wanna parse it. So this is all pretty self-explanatory here. As far as default view, so once the trace is completed, how do you want it to be revealed to you? Do you want it to keep whatever view you're currently in or do you wanna have it do something different like auto zoom into the channels or give you a result table? That's what this does here. I'll just leave it where it's at. And then detection level. So this is where you want to start identifying channels. So any power level um, that is lower than minus 50 dBm, don't show me, right? Don't count that as a channel. So you can adjust this detection level to whatever you want. Um, and so that's, that's what that does. The power offset's useful if you want to compensate for, say, a percentage tap. Um, so if you have a tap that, you, that you're plugged into to look at the... The, the DWDM channels, you know, uh, on the common side, you can actually adjust for the power offset. Uh, so the percentage tap on that. And then of course you have your pass fails. And so if you have a minimum receiver level sensitivity, so if you had a remote fire device and your transceiver says, hey, I need a minimum of minus 25 dBm for me to green up to, then you can set your pass fail thresholds here. So that's essentially what we're seeing under user preferences. And then graph view and table views to change the way that you're looking at the results change where you're looking at the results. So I'll cover that as I pull results up. So essentially I fired up the optical channel checker. I've inspected and cleaned all my connectors and I have it plugged in. Um, and then if I just want to do a quick scan to see what wavelengths are present, I would just hit scan. So it's all, it's fairly simple. It'll run through, do an acquisition. And then if it sees multiple channels or any channels at all, then it'll populate it. So in this particular instance, I have a single channel coming out of a DWDM OTDR. It is channel number 33. So if you look over here on the I2 grid, you know, we can see that we have channel 33 here, right? And so that's essentially what we have here. So I can zoom into this. So it's, it's ITU channel 33. Here is the wave, the central wavelength, and then the power level. So this is all the, the most important information that you're gonna gather here. Is this the right channel for this location, you know, for upload or download? Uh, is this the wavelength that I expect for that channel? You know, how far off is it? And then what is the power level there? So that's what we're looking at there. It only sees one channel because I, I, I am only sending one channel. So if I were to click on this channel here, if I were to click on it, it would zoom into it, right? If I click on it, it zooms back out. Right now I'm in graph view. I can also go to table view. In table view right now, it's showing me all of the channels in the spectrum. But if I only want to see the, one that's, the ones that are populated, I can just go over here and hit this button here. And this will just show the channels that are populated and nothing else. So to kind of just zoom in on your view within the table here itself. And so if I'm pretty happy at this, I can save the results here. 
you know, to a, a .occ file, I can give it a name, that type of things. If I want to generate a report, I can just hit report here, and then this will generate a report. So I can put the information in here that I would like, and then hit generate, and then a PDF will be generated. Uh, to give you an idea what it looks like with multiple channels, let me go ahead and open up, say, a 10-channel system here. This is an example trace that was done on a system. And so right now I'm in the table view. If I go to the graph view, this is what it looks like. So we're sharing channels fairly well here. So this is fairly balanced here. Again, if I want to zoom into individual ones, I can do that. All right, so channel 31, and these are the power levels in DBM here. Um, if I want to look at a table view, again, this is for all of the channels, and this is just for the ones that are populated. So I can really drill down and just narrow in on the channels that I want to see. And if I'm happy with what I see here, if these are the results I want to see, again, we can just hit save, give it a file name, you know, whatever you'd like. And in this case here, I'll just call it, say something like demo. Demo. Hit OK, and it saves it. If I want to generate a PDF right away, I can get in there, generate a PDF. You know, we'll call this port uh, 001. Um, you know, give myself a name here. And then some sort of identifier. So this is work order 9874. You know, something like that. And then I just hit generate. It'll create a PDF or an XML. I'm going to do a PDF and then just save it. And then it'll save it as a PDF. And then now if I want to view the results, uh, essentially, um, or transfer it or move it, I can either just hit open to, to go back and, you know, review those results, or I can go back to my home screen here under file manager. If I, if I just want to look at that PDF, I can just go to where that PDF is saved. And so there's my PDF right there. I can double click on it and I can analyze the data. All right, so that's all I'm doing here. So, I'm just, so I can analyze all this data. You can see all the information's in here for the PDF. And of course, because I'm in a Windows environment here, this is just File Explorer, you know, I can essentially uh, edit, copy, and then go to something like a removable drive, like I have here, and just hit Edit, Paste. And then that will be pasted over to my removable drive and I can transfer it over. And so that's one way to get the data off of the platform. The other way is to use a data mover here. If I hit data mover, what it will do is it'll take all the test data that's ever been saved, including screenshots, PDF, reports, traces, and just remove them, and, and I'm sorry, and move them to the removable disk. So I can just hit copy here and then everything that's ever been saved on this unit will be moved to the removable disk. In fact, if I go back to the removable disk here, we'll see that there's a timestamp for today that has that information in there. And so, um, so this is a great way to get this data off of the unit here, is, uh, is, is just using the kind of the data transfer there. And so that was the scan. We also have a live mode. So the live mode, I essentially am looking at the signal in real time. So if we hit live, we'll be able to see that we have an individual channel here. And so we're looking at this in real time. So if you have multiple channels here, if somebody's manipulating the fiber or turning up a new service, you can see these channels kind of join and leave here, right? Uh, which is really, really handy. And if I were to attenuate the signal a little bit, so I'm just bending the fiber here, you'll see my power values will change. And so keep changing and keep changing. And so that's what the live mode allows you to do. So it's really good for troubleshooting. Um, and trying to identify where the channels are present, where they're not present in a, uh, in a live environment. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell. That is Exfo's Max 5205 DWDM Channel Checker. My name is Kevin Pires. Thank you very much.